Circumstances, Surroundings and Opportunities for Growth by George Sidney Arundale, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. Circumstances, Surroundings and Opportunities for Growth Your circumstances are self-made. That is the supreme truth to be realised when you observe your conditions of life. There is no such thing as chance or luck. There is only law. And though we may think we see anything but law, the truth is that the law is there even though we cannot see it. We see everywhere inequality both of condition and of opportunity. We see favourable surroundings and unfavourable surroundings. We see individuals able to make much of even a little, and we see individuals unable to make anything even of a wealth of opportunity. We see individuals born fortunately and happily, with lives before them of ease and joy. We see individuals born amidst conditions of great misery, with only the blackest of prospects awaiting them. We see individuals born handicapped from the very start by disease, by feeble-mindedness, by criminal propensities, by uncontrollable passions. We see individuals born with every conceivable circumstance weighted in their favour, so that success is assured to them no matter what they undertake. We see individuals destined for genius and heroism and sainthood. We see individuals condemned to lead the most ordinary and sordid of lives. We see individuals soaring to power. We see individuals submerged in slavery. We see around us beautiful forms and ugly forms, generous hearts and selfish hearts, intelligent minds and stupid minds, refined natures and crude natures. Everywhere inequality and inevitably so because each one of us is at his own particular stage of unfoldment, no one at exactly the same stage as anyone else. But whatever the circumstance may be, it is self-made. As we have lived in previous births, so are we today. As we have sown in lives gone by, so we are reaping today. The law of nature or life is such that each individual, says Theosophy, has just the surroundings appropriate to his stage of unfoldment, and the fact that more or less the same surroundings are common to a number of us merely shows that a number of us are, more or less, though by no means quite, the same. And each of us, however common the surroundings may be, reacts in some measure at least differently to them. But it is not enough to say that we have the surroundings which are appropriate to our various stages of evolution. We must also say that in these surroundings lies what we need in order to take the next step on our unfolding way. Thus, our surroundings and circumstances have a twofold function. They express our stage of development and they contain the materials necessary for our further building. They are fulfilments and opportunities.